everyone. Welcome to another Painting with Jay. As always, my name is Jay. Grab a brush. Let's paint. I'm just going to jab and talk about stuff. And yeah. So feel free to grab your brushes. Paint along with me. See what you can get done too. Let's go. Hey everyone. So this is what I'm working on this week. Six Necron Destroyers. All my warriors are painted and based like this. Ooh, pretty. So they're all good. So today I'm just going to be working on destroyers. Now, the next thing I'm going to work on after these guys, this is obviously my Necron Vember painting challenge. And uh, it's been going really well. Like I, I painted uh, like 400 and something points worth of warriors. So that plus my, sp uh, my Camp Tech spiders, not spiders, Camp Tech uh, swarm guys, whatever they're called. I think they're still spiders. So that alone adds up to a good amount of points. So things are good. I am not complaining. I've had a great month of painting so far. Um, but let's continue. Let's paint up some guys. And after this, there are two options for my army. Now, I'll, I'll, this is my first thing that I want to ask you guys your advice on. And girls, obviously. Few people. Is what should I add next? Because next week I may not have the most time to paint but I'm going to try. I'm going to try to get both these things done. But what if I only have a chance for one? The two options are, okay? The two options for next week's painting are a monolith. Which, a monolith may not actually take me that much time. I, might, I don't know if I'll be able to make a tutorial out of it. But um, a monolith. Monolith. It sounds like I have a lisp whenever I say that. A monolith. Uh, so the first one's a monolith. And, because uh, it'd be good, like every Necron army used to have a monolith years ago, before uh, they kind of got nerfed, but they're not that bad in these editions. Cool. So a monolith is the first option. And the second option is um, three wraiths. What are they called? The Camtech wraiths? Because they're pretty cool. Like, they're... They're... Um, pretty fast, I remember, and they, um, they hit hard, because they have a 3-up invul, a lot of attacks, I think they can rend, so they're pretty nasty too, they're, they're pretty nasty indeed, so, maybe I should build them, you know, uh, as I said, versus a monolith, monoliths are cool too, you know, especially in 7th edition, I could see monoliths being pretty good, Seeing as they're 14 around, armor 14, right? So that's pretty nasty. And yeah, like that's just pretty nasty. I don't know what this is focusing on, so let's see. <laughs> yeah, it's basically on my hand. Okay. So, uh, a monolith would be cool. And of course, I really want to get to... Oh man, like I, I decided at the beginning of this month that next month is probably going to be Warm of Hordes for December. And then I think I'm going to do what I, I've said in the last video. I think I'm going to make two months of Tyranids because they just keep releasing more and more awesome Tyranid models. And it just keeps... I'm like, oh. I just realized I didn't order uh, any of the Venomthrope Zonethrope's kits, which I'm okay with right now, because they're not new. Well, there's the new, you know, the new model, that one new uh, cool guy, which I want to try out. But um, I just don't know if I have much time over the next, you know, few um, few weeks, you know, to actually get them done. I'll see. I'm gonna think about it. Maybe I'll order them tomorrow. And then stop ordering models, but because right now the operation is to paint models, right? Paint the models. Do not keep uh, buying them. I used to do is during these painting challenges. I used to set myself a rule, like for every twenty models that I paint, I can purchase one, one new model. So that way, in the end, you know what? It, it's a five percent increase, you know. Or five percent of what I paint, I renew. So it's not too bad at all. And this month, like it's been really good. I've been, I really have loved these painting challenges. Um, yeah, it's been a really good 
there we go. One's done for gold. It's been a really good couple months. You know, I've really enjoyed it, for sure. I keep saying really a lot, but still, really, really. It really is true. Um, I figured, I really did think that by now I would have burnt out. I was very concerned when I started this, this multi-month, you know, renewing painting challenges that I would burn out because that's what happens when you paint too much. You get painter's burnout, right? But I've actually found kind of the complete opposite. Um, the more I paint, the more I want to paint. And like some of the last few days, rather than want to make a video, I just want to paint. It's been really weird. I'm just like, ah, oh, I really should go paint. But then I'm like, ah, oh, no, I gotta go make a video. But I'm like, ah, oh, but I could just go paint. I really just want to go paint. And that's cool. Um, I really, I haven't burnt out yet. In fact, I'm starting to see some empty shelf space on my, uh, on my shelves now. We're all, I'm throwing away the boxes, you know, and the sprues for all these guys. You know, basically I, I had two of the old battle forces plus worth of necrons to paint so you know giant boxes um and actually i'll do all shoulder pads first and then come back and do all the smaller brushes um so yeah huge amount of necrons and i and it's just it feels great to have them done and painted and i'm going to be using them in battle reports coming up and I have an opponent coming up on Friday. Today's Thursday, so tomorrow. So I'll probably film the Q and J tonight. Um, I should also do a review of the new White Dwarf. I really should. I'm getting in the mail tomorrow. Ah, oh, maybe I should. I just download it. Maybe I should. The new those new zone throw kit rules. I should do a review of that. And so I have some videos to make tonight. That's good. This week's uh, painting tutorial for the warp people. I always like to just say what's up in the warp. That way you guys know. Uh, this week it's uh, this girl. Her name is Rasputina. And she is a really cool Malifaux model. Um, for the warp... In case you're wondering, I do uh, four tutorials a month, and I do two 40k because 40k is my thing, right? Two of them are 40k. One of them is warm hordes typically, and then the other one is another system, either just a generic model that someone really wants me to paint, um, or Infinity or or Malifo. That way, each game kind of gets a little love. Or, you know, or I guess a fantasy could fall in there too. But I haven't done any fantasy yet. I'm not really a big fantasy player. Nothing against the game. I really do think the game's good. And I really love the end of times stuff that's been coming lately. Like the Nurgle themed, you know, the Nurgle chaos themed army is amazing. Uh, the Glotkin. Just a beautiful models. Beautiful models. But uh, it just it's not for me at the moment. And I feel that I just don't have the time to start another, on top of my painting challenges, I just, I really want to get some armies painted. So maybe in the next year, maybe next year I'll start a fantasy army, we'll see. But I really want to get all my, my 40k and my War Machine and all my other game systems painted. Because, you know, that's the point of these painting challenges, is to rid myself of unpainted models. And it's been working so far, you know, as I said, I'm having a great time. I'm really enjoying them. It's been keeping me on track. And uh, I, it's just been awesome seeing the, 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 the amount of finished work. Between last month and this month, I'm going to hit about 100 and something, 130 models or something painted. And then, as I said, the huge one will come J January and February. Now, February, I'm going to lose a good chunk of the month. Because I'm gone for a little bit. I'm probably going to be going to the Las Vegas Open um, in February. So that'll be cool.
but uh, it'll be good. You know, a couple months dedicated to Tyranids, because Tyranids are by far my mo the army that I, I kind of feel shame about sometimes, because I have so many unpainted models. And not even all the models I use in my battle reports are painted. So I really should get them into gear. And get them just looking awesome, you know. I have a lot of points of Tyranids, so... Might as well get them, make them look awesome, especially with the new kits that are coming out. I definitely should pick up two more drop pod kits in the near future. I don't think I'm going to pick up any more Toxicrine kits. A triple Toxicrine list might be interesting. I really don't see myself using the Maliceptor with Tyranids very much. I don't see the point, frankly, in it. Uh, not awesome model, and it is a, it is a Synapse creature, which is good. But it takes up an elite slot, and the elites are really needed in most tiered armies, either by Venomthropes to give cover, by Zoanthropes for their Psychic War Plants, which, um, combined with the new pods, is, I think, really the direction that a lot of people are going to go in the competitive scene. That people are going to, you know, put nine, or squads of, like, six in pods, two or three of them, Drop them on your enemy turn two, and just destroy whatever you want to destroy. Vehicles, you know. People who bring land raiders will be pretty surprised because they're not going to survive. Actually, the Grey Knight land raiders maybe they will because your Grey Knight opponent will just deny the witch for you know their war plans and stuff. Also, I really love this series. I have to give props to Master Dwellin. If you're out there, Master Dwellin. Or Dwellin. 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 Um, he really wanted me to bring back painting with Jay. And he suggested one of the videos. And I thought, the painting challenges. And I just thought to myself, yeah, the painting challenges would be a perfect um, venue for my painting with Jay's. I did it one episode a long time ago. And somebody uh, left me a question. I'm going to respond to it today. And uh, it was just a long time ago. I was painting uh, Dark Angel Ravenwing for Battle Reports for um, Mini Wargaming. But now that I actually have a little bit more time on my hands, I can do these weekly. And I think they're, I think they're better than playing with Jay. Until I get, get an actual game with my viewers, that would be awesome too. That would be very productive, and that way, not only people are playing, painting with me, they're paint, they're playing with me at the same time, which would be a lot of fun. So that would be a lot of fun, and uh, that'd be yes, yeah, so really cool. So it's been a good month. It has. You know, it's been a good month so far of uh, work. Uh, this week was a little bit, I wouldn't say a lazy week or anything. I was just really busy. So uh, I actually had a battle report opponent on Tuesday, but then I got stood up. <laughs> That's my wife playing with uh, Spock and Rubik outside. Uh, we have gotten buried in snow. I mean, absolutely buried. This is more snow. Like, I know I live in Canada and that's the joke that we always have snow. But right now it is, we have feet of snow. Just feet of snow outside. And it's November. And that's not normal for this area. Even though we live in Canada um, that's that's not normal. You know, that's way above average for snowfall this time of year in where we live. In some parts in Canada obviously there's tons of snowfall and, and uh, you kind of get used to it. But not here. You know, we'll get, we usually get one big snowfall in November, but not until late November usually. And then it's, you know, then it, it starts kind of the, the, uh, winter. So now I'm going to use some, uh, Gehenna's gold and go over those areas and just make them look nice. But that's it. As I said, it wasn't, um, we got buried the last few days. It's just been a crazy, I've had to shovel the driveway four times in the last 
three days, you know, and um, it takes time. It wears you out. I really, uh, I'm trying to get in better shape. I am, that's another thing I'm trying to do right now. I'm really trying to get in better shape because, I don't know, I'm old. And I just really want to get in better shape and feel better. You know, I'm not going to do a weight loss vlog or anything like that. Don't don't expect those things or, you know, no, none of those. But um, I'm just trying to eat better. That's the key. Eating better is the first step. I, I'm a pretty active person, you know. So I like, I right now I walk to work. My other job, my other job, of course, this job isn't much of a walk, but my other job, it's, it's about two kilometers, just over two kilometers each way. So that will, you know, that, um, and one's really uphill, obviously the one, one way is downhill, really downhill, but one way is really uphill. So I walk to work, you know, work so many hours and then walk home. So that's been good, you know, and uh, I've been eating better. I haven't been buying junk food as much. So, and I feel good. It's just, it's good, you know, and as I said, I just really just want to, because I, I know occasionally viewers will throw this out that I've gained weight since I started making videos, which is probably very true. So. So that's what's going on in my life. I'm getting ready for Christmas. I've already started buying Christmas gifts because I don't like to wait. Uh, I do it every year. I always say I'm going to buy gifts early. And then this year, so far, I've actually already done two people. My in-laws, basically. I've already bought their gifts. I don't think they're watching this video. I don't think they're going to be uh, watching me painting. So that'll be good. You know, I just, I hate... I hate waiting till the end, and then you, whatever you want to buy may not be there, and uh, yeah, the new year, I'm really excited, I, I'm, tr what other things I'm trying to do right now, I'm trying to get my filming to be a lot more efficient, I really am, um, so what I'm doing now is I'm filming, I'm kind of batch filming as much as I can, as I said, I actually had a battle report, there was supposed to be a battle report this week in for free. But then after all the flack I got last week about the, um, what was it called? The uh, J vs. J Bow reports, right? And I'm going to keep making them, as I said. I'm not going to fall to that. But I, I just, was I had an opponent lined up. And then he stood me up. I hope he's okay. Because I was concerned. Because like, it was a really bad weather day. And he didn't email me and tell me he wasn't coming or anything. So uh, I just hope he's okay. You know, I'm not upset at, at all or anything. Because... It happens, you know, people are busy and they, they have to take their time with their schedules to play with me and stuff. I don't mind that at all. I was just worried that he was, a, you know, which is okay. But then, as I said, I was supposed to film two games with him um, on Tuesday. And so I lost all that time. I ended up putting into a painting tutorial and a couple other things. And, and I rearranged my, um, my filming studio inside the house so that I can actually set up my green screen. And stuff, so I got some stuff done, but I'm, I'm trying right now to film more efficiently. Because what the thing is about Mini Wargaming does really, really well is that they're so far ahead. Now, it does it does suffer sometimes when they release new rules. They're so far ahead of the rule of, you know, in filming that by the time some videos come out, things become obsolete. Or you're like, oh, they have to be playing the new rules. This happens a lot with Codex editions, you know, and um, I warned Matt. Um, if anybody watches, if you want to go back to filming in some of the, um, the Tyranid Codex reviews, this is just a side note, the Tyranid Codex review that we did, uh, Matt and I did in January, I warned him in one of the videos, I said, watch out, a new code, a new edition's coming out in the summer, and he said, no, there's no way, he actually says it in the video, and, uh, I don't remember if it ended up being in, in the vault or for free, but, uh, it was really funny, and it did come out, and that's what happened. They filmed so far in advance that by the time the they found out about this new edition, they were a month ahead, and then they had to release all their videos at the same time because they they were so far ahead. And then by the time that you know the books, and that happened as well when I left Mini War Gaming, um, just before I left Mini War Gaming, I filmed this video called "Good Afternoon, Good Evening, and Good Night," and.
I filmed it, sent, you know, just thanking Mini Wargaming and, um, and thanking the viewers. And it was a good, just, you know, a heartfelt goodbye, pretty much. Um, but it took so long that, like, there was all this, people tried to create this drama that, like, I, I left on bad terms and all this stuff. And, and Matt knew about my video. And that's what he was kind of, he, he knew that, we, like, Matt and I left under awesome terms. Like, we, we're still homies. Um, Dave is probably more of my homie than Matt is, but still. Uh, I still, you know, wish them the best. We keep in touch. We always throw each other names out in videos. Like, I was mentioned recently as a joke in one of the uh, the Warp Battle Reports. You know, we, we, we're on awesome terms. Just awesome terms. I, you know, um, as far as ex-employee... Uh, old bosses go, we are under awesome, awesome terms. I'm just putting some paint back in my pot because I, you put up way too much. Um, you know, we're, we're good. We're still very, you know, we're on very awesome terms, as I said. So that's the only downside, essentially the filming. I just go like on these tangents, but, uh, so I really want to get ahead. I really do because I am ahead for miniature painting 101 for free content, obviously. Because the next six months worth of videos I've already made for you guys. But um, I'm trying to get ahead for the warp. And I'm trying to get ahead for my other content. That way I can just, once I get slightly more ahead on certain videos, I can kind of relax. In the sense that I can kind of make more types of videos that people really want me to make. Such as Tactica. Such as um, list building. Um, I've... Now that I have the green screen, I want to incorporate the green screen. I filmed the table parts of the next two um, How to Play 40K series. But now I'm going to refilm the... Um, now that i got the green screen going, I really want to refilm the parts where I'm talking and with a background because I don't like the look of the background in that in those shots. So I really want to refilm those with the green screen make it look you know, a little bit cooler, a little bit more professional. Um, and that's the next series I really want to get the ground. And then obviously... Uh, the miniature painting 101, no, I'm just um, a bunch of series. I just, I, in the new year, I would love it if I can get so far ahead that I can just make a bunch more content. Because my goal is to do this for the rest of my life, or at least a very long time. You know, I can't say rest of my life because that's probably a really exaggeration. But I really want to do this for a living. That's the thing. I want to do it for a living. And. I got it up at a notch. Now, since I've started taking my videos seriously, you know, oh, just knock something over. Ever since I started taking my videos seriously, I have uh, my, my views have gone way up, and I'm very happy with that because you know they've gone way up. Now that I'm making battle reports and a lot more content regularly, I'm I'm one of the more viewed people in our niche now. A month and that's just feels awesome but i want to even go further and further because uh youtube it it takes a surprisingly large amount of views to earn a decent income you know and i would and since i i want to i want to, my goal is to quit my other job you know and they kind of know that but they don't really no not to be fair they don't to be fair they don't really know exactly but my goal is to quit my other job i would really love to quit my other job it is nowhere as cool as these is making videos for y'all. And that might happen one day. I just, I want it to happen as soon as possible. And working, and the problem is you have to work at your my other job. I have to work at my other job until I can. So I am going to work hard. And once I can quit, I am going to make a video telling the viewers that I quit my other job and stuff. And I can focus solely on making videos. And that when that happens, even more videos are going to come out because I won't be tied to the thing. And then I was thinking about, because I work at my other job on Saturdays and Sundays. Um, That's one of the days I have to work. It's kind of not negotiable. Um, I would love to do like tournament series where I go and do a tournament and I can vlog it. It'd be a lot of fun. You know, just to go and, and vlog a, a tournament and uh, I think that'd be just really cool you know go to turn in plus then I could build lists and I have a fun like tournament building list series 
And I really don't care if, if, you know, if I go to the tournament, people have like built their lists around my list or anything. That may, that probably wouldn't happen, but, uh, kind of fun, but uh, yeah, so I would love to do that. You know, it'd be kind of a fun series to do. And then I can vlog, you know, my adventures, maybe even film filming at a tournament is hard to be honest. Uh, I get a lot of questions about that every now, every now and then I get, uh, somebody asks, why don't I go into tournaments and film? It's because uh, people don't like to be filmed at tournaments a lot of the time. Um, it's, it, they don't want to. They don't want to be on camera. Because if they want to be on camera, they'll go to battle reports or something else. But uh, they just don't want to be on film. And also, being on film, um, it makes people nervous. It really does. So not everyone. But it does make certain people nervous. And it... Um, it makes them nervous and it distracts them like, and, it, and so instead of, uh, instead of playing the game that they've come here to play in a tournament, they are nervous about being on film, making mistakes and being ridiculed online. So it's, it kind of creates an unfair game because your opponent is going to be worrying more about the game, sorry, more about, uh, you know, how they look than about the game. So it's just, it's, uh, it's not, the best for tournaments, you know, because, so what people tend to do, like, uh, I know Owen has done this when he's gone to tournaments, is you just set up the camera, if your opponent is okay with it, you set up the camera in the corner, and then you just film the entire game, and that's it. So it becomes one of those, you know, the over-the-shoulder kind of battle reports, which aren't people's real favorite, but it might be interesting. But, like, for a 40K game, that could be hours upon hours of footage. Many, many hours of footage. Uh, that should be okay. Three color minimum. No kidding. There's gonna be more than three colors in these guys. Um, so it's 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 hard. But I would love to vlog it. Like I loved doing that vlog I did last year for Food Machine. Uh, I was actually going to thinking about doing Food Machine this year, but my wife I know I knew needed the car that weekend. She went to go visit her parents, and uh, there was no way I could I could I guess could have rented a car and something. But it was just a little bit concerning. And plus I need to work on my other job. On weekend, so. But I'd love to keep doing that, you know. Go do weekend tournament scenes. Um, that would be a really fun series. Maybe even try a War Machine tournament one day. Forty K tournaments are a different thing in themselves. I really love forty K tournaments because they have soft scores. They tend to be a lot more fun, and I can just bring a goofy list and have a great time and meet people, and um, that's what I love to do. But uh, a war machine tournament is a different beast unto itself because uh, they're really competitive. Really, really, really competitive. Really competitive. They're the type of, com of tournaments that I've actually, I've been in one war machine tournament and it was a fun one. It was called Who's your boss? Who's the boss? And what they do is each turn, each game, you play with a different caster or warlock, and you draw them. Like was this was at Adepticon, and um, that reminds me, I got to sign up for Adepticon. The badge is going to sale next Monday. But uh, it was a fun tournament. Even in the fun tournament, people were really playing hardcore, like competitive, competitive. You could tell, like the, the tones of the people around you were like, oh, very competitive. I was like, this is the fun tournament, you know, and I've actually heard of many times, uh, Owen tells me pretty much every tournament he's been at that if you lose, like these people are so competitive and the only thing on their mind is to win that if they lose, they leave because they know that, uh, only the, you know, there's one winner and to win you 99% of the time, you have to win all your games. And, um, so if you lose, there's no point continuing if you're only there to win, right? So they leave. And that's brutal. You know, if I'm paying for a tournament, I'm going to have a go, go, I'm going to, you know, taking time off my other job. I'm going to go have a great time. I'm going to meet people, schmooze, you know, just have a good time. But, uh, people leave. And that's how just competitive it is. You know, if you lose, you, um, a lot of time, you leave. And then the problem is by leaving, in war, in war Machine tournaments, 
there's frequently a draw. No, not a draw. Uh, frequently a tie at the end for amount of points. Because there just isn't enough games to make everyone play, you know, in a Swiss, in a Swiss system. If you're playing winners versus winners, um, if you have 32 people, you know, 32, 16 people win the first round, 8 the second, that was a cool spin, 4 the third, 2 the, the fifth, or sorry, fourth, and then 1 the fifth. So you need, you know, 5 rounds, and in a 2 hour round, it takes 10 hours to do that. With, you know, so a lot of the time, what you find is at these tournaments is, um, is that there's just not enough rounds to dictate an ultimate winner. As in someone has an undefeated uh, an undefeated record and everyone else does not. So what happens is they have this thing called strength of schedule, which is a really silly algorithm they run, where they judge how good your opponents were and rank you according to how good your opponents were they, and how you did against them. The only problem, though, is it penalizes, it tends to penalize those who are actually really good. Um, and played slightly, maybe, I don't know, it's, it's possible to say weaker opponents, but you know what I'm saying? Like, Owen, Owen, every time, like, I'd come in and talk to Owen on a Monday, back when I used to work with him, he'd tell me about how he would end up being, like, he would tie someone for strength of schedule. Uh, or, he, sorry, he'd tie someone in for the end. Like, he'd come in second, for example, in a tournament. Uh, but so would other two or three other people. And then because he beat them um, for the games, like it was, it was something this weird algorithm. Um, but they would end up ahead of him. Despite the fact that they tied, but then they would take into consideration strength of schedule. And Owen would get penalized because he beat them, and it, it's just like really weird. So then he would end up in fourth or fifth behind two guys that he actually beat. So, it's kind of weird, you know? It's an interesting uh, concept. And I just don't know if I... I don't know if my personality would gel well at a War Machine tournament that is not for fun because um, I would be one of those people that brings a relatively... I, don't, I wouldn't say the most competitive list and I would probably be a really easy win for several people because these lists that people bring to these War Machine tournaments are really cutthroat. As I said, they're, they're extremely competitive lists. I, I do keep up every now and then with, with my old comrades, um, Owen and Dan, and both of them are very much obsessed with War Machine and Hordes. They're basically only playing War Machine and Hordes these days. Uh, Owen does play a slightly... Owen every now and then plays a fantasy game. Um, but Dan is pretty much entirely War Machine. And so they keep me up with their, you know, their, shen their shenanigans of, of War Machine. And they tell me about these tournaments. As I said, they go to tournaments a lot. And, yeah. They, they're so cutthroat lists. People, they, they obsess about their lists. And then they build these lists that, like, kill you turn one or two. That's the other thing about the War Machine tournaments. It's like, if I'm playing a tournament, I'm paying... I would hate to lose turn one or two every game. That's not very fun. Yeah, that's not fun at all. You know, nobody wants to get a, you know, I don't know. I just play for fun and win or lose. For, for 40k, I have a great time. I... Love it. You know, that's it. I'm not, as you guys know, I'm not the most competitive player. I know how to build competitive lists. I think I do, at least. So, blacks are done. Time to start on Warp Stone Glow. Um, I just, I think I know how to build a quasi-competitive list in 40k. You know, I, I just don't play the most competitive armies. Orcs are not the most competitive army. Neither are Tyrant. Maybe now with the new... Now that they're bringing back a, a quasi okay doom, not as good as the previous doom, because it's a focused witch fire as opposed to a 
it was a focus witch fire as opposed to the old doom, which was a passive power that happened in both phases, like both turns, versus now where it's just you. It's a focus witch fire in your psychic phase, and. That's it. But still. He's cool. Now you can kind of protect your Doom of Malentai because he's a, a part of the squad. Let's paint, paint some warps on gold. And the drop pods are back. And that makes me happy. <laughs> so... Yeah, one day. I'm intentionally painting. This is where you guys wondering. I'm intentionally painting outside the, the lines there, just to create a quick, very quick uh, glow effect. But uh, I would love that in the future. You know, I would love to do Tactica series. I would just love to work. Like I would, if if I could just every day wake up and go right to work in my studio, I would be happy. But it, it's a dream. I'm gonna work hard. I'm gonna work very hard to get this dream off the ground. I really am. But it's not gonna happen tomorrow. It's not gonna happen next week. And it's probably not gonna happen for a while. And I and I understand that. I'm fully aware of that. You know. My fate is tied to the warp and to um, my free content, and uh, and I will do my best to make sure that both are as popular as possible. That's it. You know, that's all I can do: work hard and follow my dream, and that's. And I don't need to, then I won't need to wear a suit and tie, not like I do anyway. And the other thing I really want to do is keep going to conventions. Because next year, right now, I'm so, I'm actually signed up for two, oh, I'm not signed up, but I booked hotels and stuff for uh, three conventions. Las Vegas Open in February. Adepticon in March. And um, Gen Con in July so I love to go to these conventions and meet all y'all and have a great time you know mm-hmm And apparently this year, I, a couple of people have told me that this year there is going to be open gaming at Adepticon. Last year there was no open gaming at Adepticon for 40k until like 11 o'clock at night. One of the nights. Or 1 o'clock at night, it was 10 o'clock. And I really, I went there expect, I maybe foolishly, I went there expecting some open gaming so that I can go and meet fans and play some battle reports and have a great time. But um, it just didn't happen. It really just didn't happen. And um, I was disappointed. But this year, apparently, there's going to be open gaming. And that's good. Because conventions-wise, I am not going to convent... To be honest, my reason to go to conventions is not to be in the tournaments. I did a tournament last year for fun, just to experience a War Machine tournament. But uh, for me, the best part about conventions is meeting people. I really love it. And, and just meeting all the vendors and stuff, but... People, because vendors are people too. And um, meeting people, that's what I, I really love to go there for because I get to meet people. And there's a good chance that I only get to meet these people at this convention. You know? Like, I get to, I get to hang out with the WGC people. Chung, Les, Austin. They're just really... Uh, Miranda, Miranda wasn't at Gen Con, but she was at Adepticon last year. Dan... I don't get to see them very often at all. We all live in different parts of the, of North America. And I get to see them. They just talk to them, hang out with them, see what's new. 
And it's just awesome to me. Last year at, at Adepticon, I met a lot of people. It was actually when I first really hung out with the WGC for the first time. Um, I met some awesome War Machine people, some 40K people that I'm going to have rematches with. i got to email them back, but I'm definitely going to try to get some rematches this year for some 40K. Um, what else? I, you know, at, at Gen Con, I met a really nice guy named Jared Saunders. Oh, Justin Tan, of course. And the people at that make the cool models, you know? There was Justin Tan, there was Matt. There was, um, oh, what was his name? I'll remember in a second. Jeremy. Jeremy was really interesting. He was a fun guy at, uh, at, a, at Gen Con. I met Jared Saunders from, uh, from Geek Chic. And man, those Geek Chic tables, I've never seen them before in person, but they are just disgustingly awesome. Like they, I see them and I'm like, if I only had money, I would throw it at you right now. You know, because they're such nice guys. And all the people, you can always tell the Geek Chic employees. And I was like, wow, this Jared Saunders guy, he's really a snappy dresser. And I looked around and they're all like Jared Saunders level of snappiness. They're all really nicely dressed people. They're very chic, I guess. That makes sense. Geek Chic, right? But, uh, and I remember names. I'm actually really good at remembering names. Um, it was as long as I hear them. There have been a couple times where I meet someone and I don't get their name. And I always feel, I, I always feel, um, bad about asking them their names afterwards so I gotta find out so I just try to hot read their names but like Jared Saunders and I met uh, Nathan Lee you know Nate is a great guy and that's what I look forward to the most is just going and meeting people hanging out with people hearing their stories you know um, that's it meeting people is so much fun it really is and I'm we're in Canada you know in Canada I live pretty far. The, the hubs of these games are not in Canada. And I understand that. And I like that's why I love going to tournaments as well. Just meeting people. That's what I love. It's my favorite thing to do. It's just meet people, talk with people, have a good time, you know. Go out for a root beer. Yeah. Look at him. So there's another guy down. Two, three, three are done. This is good. Looking's progress, people. I don't know how much a destroyer is, but I'm well on my way for the six of them. Look at this. This is my weekly task. Like it's the amount I get done in one of these videos. That's what I love about these videos too. Is uh, man, I'm talking about saying the word love a lot today. Whatever. But uh, these videos just sit me down and I paint and I had a great time. I don't. I'm glad I don't answer questions. I'm glad it's just me rambling because answering questions would take too much time away. But uh, I'm going to have a Necron army at the end of this month. In fact, I'm probably going to play Necrons tomorrow. Um, I'm filming a battle report tomorrow. My opponent's bringing Chaos. But he's also relatively new to the game. So I'm going to warn people that if he makes rule mistakes... I'm not familiar with Chaos. I'm really not. Most of their stat lines I am familiar with because they're very close to Space Marines. But their special rules are not the same. They don't have the initial no-no fear. They, they're uh, in the lower leaderships. So, and my wife and I are going to go see Dumb and Dumber 2 today. I think I, I got to go see it. I know people are saying it's hilarious but terrible, but I'm going to go see it. I really am. So that's it. So if you're going to any of those conventions, if you want to talk with me, come find me. If you see me walking around, don't feel nervous at all interrupt what I'm talking about come talk to me I don't mind at all I would love to meet you people very much you know I don't consider myself a celebrity um, but a couple times people have actually said like they feel weird talking to me because they're used to seeing me on screen on the TV right all the time not TV uh, computer all the time but that's it I go to have a great time and to meet people you know, uh, last year someone actually came and was talking in the middle of a War Machine game tournament. I didn't care at all. My opponent actually, it was really funny, my opponent uh, said to the guys, like, maybe you shouldn't be talking to him right now. And I'm like, oh, don't worry. 
Worst going more source, I make a game ending mistake. But that's not really, you know, that doesn't matter too much. You know, I didn't care. If I lost, big whoop. But it was cool, you know, and that's it. So Adepticon this year, Gen Con, uh, and Las Vegas Open. And my dream, one day as well, would be like um, Games Day UK. Because it would only be 40k. And I would love to go visit the British people. Because I know that I have a lot of uh, viewers in Britain, and it's it's really cool. You know, I can go meet like Archon Timatron or a bunch of other British people. It'd be cool. So, mm -hmm. what else? Um, oh, a lot of people have asked me. While I'm talking about this stuff, several of you have asked me, what do I think of um, Ash? I don't know why, but I've gotten several questions about Ash from Mini Wargaming. Kind of because, I guess people see him as kind of my replacement. He he got hired shortly after I left. Um, and he does fulfill a similar style. You know, he really loves the hobby, and he's a, a really fun guy. So... What do I think about him? I really like the guy. I think he's a great asset to me in Wargaming. And uh, I like him a lot. He he did have, he obviously had some troubles with his beginning battle reports. Because his voice. Like, he did the same thing I do. But he's even more extreme that he yells a lot. And like, whoa! And people don't like that. Right? Just if you do it too much, people don't like it. It makes sense. But besides that, he really knows a lot. And his workshop. I think it's called. No, not the workshop. Machine shop? Workshop? Garage? I forgot what it's called. His, his new series that he makes is really good. I watch it. I like it. He seems like he's a really down-to-earth good guy. So I like that. You know, he... Um, I think he's a good guy. Um, I think Mini Wargaming is in a great spot right now. Um, they got some really good people working right there. and So, yeah. Uh, if I can give... Mr. Ash, any advice? Keep doing what you're doing and you love me your videos and stuff. And, uh, yeah. I love that video that they made. Uh, of course, Dave and Matt weren't in it, but that the mini war gaming that they made, that video for the week that uh, Matt and Dave were gone at Valhalla, is arguably my, probably my favorite video that mini war gaming ever made. And the best part of why it was well, not Dave or Matt and they had no nothing to do with it. It was just Chris and Steve and Justin and uh, Ash. You know, I can't penalize Ash because he has the name of a Pokemon trainer. But, uh, no, he's a great guy. I, I really like his content. I really do. And, for those of you who don't know, I am actually a... I am fully... Like, um, I am subscribed to the Vault still. I help them. I, I still support Mini Wargaming, and they support me. And that's that's our relationship. We have a good relationship. So, mm -hmm. if I'm ever in that area again, I should definitely come visit them and do another battle report. Yeah, and Ash also brings a new layer of knowledge because he worked for game. Supposedly, he's the very first Blood Ravens player, according to one of the latest battle reports. That's kind of cool. Like he he play he worked at a Games Workshop and he rose through the ranks of Games Workshop for a uh, a long time, supposedly. And then then he now works for New Wargaming. So, um, the amount of knowledge I guessing he has of the company how the company has worked over the last you know decade would be really it'd be i'd love to sit down and just talk with him now i'm guessing he can't say anything he has a no he has a i know for a fact he has a um i forget what that's called a sign you know a silence clause essentially he can't talk about things right a, a 
uh, non-disclosure agreement. But uh, I would love, if I could talk to him, I would love to sit down and talk with him. Because he, I think he would have some very interesting insight. And I, I love Games Workshop products. And that's the thing. I really, I don't believe, I don't feel in my heart of hearts that Games Workshop is doomed or anything right now. I think, I love 7th edition. I love 7th edition. To me, if they came out with 7th edition instead of 6th, I think that would have saved a lot of people. Getting mad. 7th edition is really well written. Really well written. You know, the amount of structure they put into the game saves a lot of arguments. The fact that guns now fire at different times, oh, that saves a lot of arguments. That's easy, you know? So. Is Games Workshop needing of a couple makeovers? Yeah. Like all companies do every now and then. You know, I used to live in Guelph, Canada. Now, for those of you who don't know, Guelph, the neighboring city to Guelph is Kitchener and Waterloo. It's the, called the Tri-City area. Cambridge, Kitchener, Waterloo. Right? And then Guelph is right beside them. And Cambridge, no, sorry, Kitchener, Waterloo is home to a company, Blackberry. It used to be called um, RIM, Research in Motion. But then they changed their name to Blackberry to make sure that just they're synonymous with the one product that people like of theirs. And that product, like, I watched over the years that I lived in Guelph, Blackberry was the thing, and all of a sudden Blackberry was not the thing. And, oh, man, was Blackberry not the thing. Um, their sales suffer, like, into this day, I think they're selling to an, uh, an Asian company. But uh, you understand that companies go through ups and downs, trials and tribulations, slips and falls, and, like, even Apple, right? Apple... My father actually used to work with Steve Jobs years ago, years and years ago. And my father left the company when Apple was doing terribly. And Apple did terribly for many years. Like they, and then the, I was the, um, a couple computers and the iPod resurrected the company. So I am very confident that GW can stay alive. I think what they do with fantasy is going to be very pivotal, but they got to keep the 40k people happy. And I think that they're doing that. I think the 40k people that are like me and love 40k still are really... I love 7th edition. I The more I play it, the more I like it. My favorite edition, though, probably 5th. Because 5th, to me, seemed the most balanced between uh, shooting and assaulting. Like, there was a really... Um, strong debate in your head whether or not to bring a shooty list or an assaulty list. You know, 4th edition was really all about assault. Assault was really powerful in 4th in edition. Uh, you could jump between... Basically, you can consolidate into another assault to keep your guys alive. So, Gene Stealers, Harlequins, any of these glass hammery assault units, they, um, they would just bounce between combats, and you couldn't do anything to them. So, they would just bounce around the table, killing everything in their way. And... Uh, as I said, there's nothing really you could do to prevent them from doing this. It was really bad. Like, not bad, but I mean, like, if you were running up against a Gene Stealer full list, they would rock you because they would just jump between assaults to kill everything and then jump to the next combat. And, um, same with Harlequins and stuff. That was really, it was really very much assault based. And then came 5th edition. And 5th edition really balanced it because, uh, you couldn't do that anymore. That alone, that big change prevented, um, uh, assaulty lists from doing that. And that was a huge nerf to a salty list. But I liked it because it balanced uh, shooting versus assault. The two main strategies of the game. But then 6th edition and 7th edition are very much a shooty game. Obviously because they, they changed how rapid fire works. Which most of the people's guns are rapid fire. Seeing as Space Marines are the primary faction of the game. Um, Overwatch. Huge. You know, and the removing of, from the front models. Because it, that alone slows down the assault lists because it puts them farther back than they normally would be. And then obviously wound allocation as well. Um, a lot of the assaulty heavy lists were really good at wound allocation. Now bikers, paladins, you know, I forgot to highlight his uh, symbol up. And that's it. These guys are pretty much done. I think that's it what I'm going to keep them at. Other than maybe put the, the start, the... Uh, 
I'm not gonna paint them to such a higher, a, a much higher standard than this. That's good. I think they have glow. They have some glow factors. Look at that. I think that's good. It's definitely three color minimum. I better focus on them. Let's see here. There we go. So they have black, metallic, silver, gold, green. Four colors. That's them. I think that's good. Look at that. I just painted four destroyers. Dun da da da. In uh, one hour video. This is awesome. I am happy with these results. I love this. Let's take some of these little things. I'm going to, uh, while we're talking for a couple more minutes, and I'm going to end at the hour mark because uh, this video is just getting insanely long. And I can't uh, keep talking indefinitely. Yes. So, yeah. Look at that. So look at this. I am, maybe I will have time. We'll see. I'll start on the, uh, whatever you guys suggest. So you, that's my big question to you guys today. Is, uh, also, my, so my two questions for you today. I would really like your opinion. Number one, should I do monolith versus uh, wraiths? Right? One's heavy support, which I do have a lot of room for. And one's fast attack, which I already I have room for, too, other than the fact that I could just take, you know, uh, Swarms of awesomeness. So what do I do? Put these in like this. Hmm. So that would be good too. Uh, what do you guys think I should do? Do you think I should put? Well, I guess I just yeah. No point even taping them or right, gluing them. Um, do you think I should do monolith or wraiths? And the second is, what is your favorite edition of 40k? And why? You know, I started back in second. I didn't play third. All right, I skipped third. Fourth, I liked. I really liked fourth. I really liked fifth. I think fifth is probably my favorite edition. Probably. Um, wow, these are going to take up a lot of them. Each one takes four. Cool. And that's it. I couldn't go. So let's end here. It's been about an hour. He looks good. Ready for the tabletop? He's going to kick butt. So, so that concludes this week's episode of Painting with Jay. I really hope you got stuff done too. I hope you painted along. Feel free to answer my questions. And feel free to catch you next week where I will paint some more stuff. Probably a monolith or some wraiths. So we'll see. So thank you very much for watching this episode. I really hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting with Jay.